Okay, so in this episode, we're going to be talking about um, how to get better handheld shots or how to improve it. It's pretty much my bread and butter. Um, been shooting handheld since day one, so I'm kind of used to it. I've got some good insider knowledge, so hopefully, I can share the wealth. Welcome back to another Tips and Tricks episode. Where, where is he? He had one job. We're, we're hijacking this one. Um, Hijack. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Tips and Tricks. Hijacked. Hijacked. So, Joey's not here. Because he's getting his f***ing hair cut or something. So we've decided to hijack it. This is Dan. I'm the lead cinematographer and creative director at Videos, and this is Maya. I am the social media content creator at Videos. She doesn't even know her own role. No, I don't. <laughs> okay, so in this episode, we're going to be talking about um, how to get better handheld shots or how to improve it. So basically, I have little to no knowledge of filming handheld. I've either used tripods or I've used electric gimbals. So. I kind of have very shaky hands, I'm not the best. Whereas Dan has been doing handheld shooting for how long? Like 15 plus years. I've pretty much been shooting handheld since day one, so I'm kind of used to it. I've got some good insider knowledge, so hopefully I can share the wealth. And hopefully you guys will be able to see me progress throughout the video from shaky to smooth. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the session. Session? Woo! <laughs> Okay, so hopefully on this video we're gonna improve Maya's technique somewhat. So we're gonna do a shot now where she's handheld and then with the equipment tips and tricks that we're gonna go through, hopefully we see an improvement towards the end of the video, so. This is me, no tips, no tricks, pure Maya. You're walking so fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be one shaky piece of footage. Okay, so tip one is to get the camera settings right. So I've done a little bit of Google for this, good old Google. What is optical image stabilization? Okay, well that would be image stabilization. <laughs> image stabilization inbuilt to your lens. So this one is a poor example because it doesn't have it. But the one I'm shooting on, um, the RF 15 to 45, does have it, um, which basically means all of the shit you're gonna face with stabilization or shakiness is kind of fixed internally within the lens, and then that's kind of sent back to through the connector into the camera software. Cine lenses and cinema cameras in general won't have any inbuilt stabilization. Uh, if you're just starting out, especially if you are doing a lot of handheld work, I'd recommend getting a lens that does have inbuilt stabilization. Um, this one's a big chunky one. It doesn't have it, but it's weighted nicely, so it's not really needed. Okay, so the next thing I found on my little Google search was in-body stabilization. So I'm guessing that's to do with the camera. It's essentially the same thing as the lens. It's just inbuilt. A lot of it's through software. Um, so cameras will have like a gyro, um, so it can work out direction, position, everything, however it's held. And then from that, it would do the math and correct it all in post, well, in camera. Mm -hmm. It's good, um, especially if you're running a gun in, but if you are after a handheld look, so a little bit more movement, mm -hmm. it's gonna, you're gonna wanna turn it off mm -hmm. um, because it's just gonna try and auto-correct and your footage will, it won't look right. It, uh, overcompensate and it'll be all over the shop. Yeah. So it has its benefits. Yeah, so that's an important thing to note then is sometimes some movement is good in yeah. video. Yeah. Okay, Definitely. cool. Okay, so finally was digital image stabilization. Wow, doing all right here. Um, and I'm guessing this is more stuff to do in post-production. Yeah, so, um, well, yeah, it's post-production stabilization. All right, next. So I actually had an experience with this when I filmed the scene in one of my vlogs, the driving scene, and it was really wobbly. 
wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Because I'd put it on top of like the heater on the car, so it was really wobbly. Um, and in Premiere Pro, there was a setting that I could just add on to my yeah, an effect, footage. optical flow. Mm -hmm. And that was an example of digital tool. Yeah, the wobbliness comes from the fact you're using a rolling shutter. Um, so it, the rolling shutter will take the image going down gradually rather than a global shutter, which is the whole image at once. So if you're moving while seeing the sensor, the pixels are picking it up, then there's going to be like a rolling shutter effect. And that's kind of where the wobble comes in. Mm -hmm. So optical flow sorts that out. Yeah, and if you're editing anyway on Premiere or DaVinci, then there are loads of options for you to be able to just tweak it in post because I managed to all by myself. I, I told her to, to do it. You mentioned it and I found out how to do it on my own. I think I'm going to have some tequila. Okay. Uh, I, uh, definitely not um, drinking on a job. Just, yeah, cool. Okay, so Cameras. What, yeah. What's this bit about? So tip number two is to get the equipment right. So we have two areas of this tip and one of them is about the lens. Do you want to explain how I can make my shot look better by the lens? Because you've seen my first shot, it doesn't look great. It's not the best, yeah. I'll, I'll accept that. Uh, it's not necessarily that your footage is gonna look better, mm -hmm. but it'd be more stable. Mm -hmm. um, so a wide lens would be my advice if you're struggling with some shaky ass crackhead footage. Um, basically what this does is you've got a wider field of view, so it allows a lot more leeway um, with your shakiness. But yeah, a wider lens will help eliminate a lot of shake. Um, it's just a, a lot more room for manoeuvre. So next part of equipment was the strap. Yeah. Show so, me what I do with this thing. So what you do, um, strap around the neck and you can kind of push a little bit. So it gives a lot more stability. The camera is almost, I don't know, it's got a anchored, bit more leverage. Yeah. Anchored to anchored. you as well. That's a good word. It naturally helps create a little, because if you're moving and you're like, say you're moving around, you've got that natural shape, but if you're pushing against like that, yeah. there's going to be a lot less. What it is, is shape. that extra bit of tension. So with your arms, they're kind of loose a bit, but when you push on something, you've got that extra tension. Mm -hmm. So it just naturally just stabilizes it a bit more. It'd be great for like panning shots and. Yeah. Okay guys, so uh, tip number three is all about adding in extra equipment. First one is top handle. <laughs> Um, now, I'm not going to lie, I don't really use them that much, but they are great. Um, like the strap, it just adds a bit more stability to using the camera. Next is to add some weight to the camera. So both of these tips can work for any camera, can't they? You can use the top handle for smaller DSLRs and yeah. for bigger pro cameras. Um, but the smaller camera, this one's more for like smaller cameras like this, or if you have, I used to use the Sony A5100, which is tiny. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's adding some weight to it. Yeah, so I use this one as an example. This camera, the uh, Canon EOS R, is actually really small and light, but now I've got a massive lens here and it weighs a lot, but just adding that, adds so much stability just off the bat. So I wouldn't suggest putting any more weight on this, but if you've got a DD camera like that, a pistol grip or something automatically adds a bit of weight and also somewhere else to hold for a bit of stability. Yeah, exactly. It all depends on the person, but adding a little bit of extra weight, because if you've got something really light, it's a lot harder to control. I've noticed that. When you film on your phone, it's a lot harder to control what you're filming compared to yeah, I mean, I shoot on bigger cameras, like the Komodo is a pretty small light camera, but I've packed it full of screens and lenses and that. The Helium is a bigger camera with a battery and a screen and a lens. I wouldn't want to add any more weight on, maybe a top handle or a, a little side handle, but I wouldn't want to add any more weight to that. Um, it's hard enough to get stable shots on that as it is, because it's a cine camera. So basically, more is less. No. No, because we're adding more. But I just said less is more for mine. Right, and more, more is less. less. So, yeah. What's tip number what is this? Three. Okay, tip number three is a load of b****. 
<laughs> we'll go straight to number four. Dan and Maya, they're going to get fired. <laughs> So tip number four is to learn to hold the camera properly. This can be the difference between shaky footage and really stable footage. So yeah, um, this one's a, probably a good tip if you are you are using a, a lens and that which doesn't have stabilization and if you're gonna be manual focusing a lot. Um, so if I'm holding it here, you can kind of, you'll be able to see we'll show this footage. It is a bit shaky. One of the tips is to kind of hold it a bit closer um, cradle it, I believe you said. Yes, so hold it closer to your body and then also you're naturally doing it. You've got one hand underneath, so you're using like the handle on the side, but you're also, you have one hand underneath. This is great for like, if you're going to be staying still, obviously Dan is moving here, but that's, he's doing what the next step is, so just stay tuned with his legs. <laughs> just, it's natural. <laughs> um, but if you wanted to stay still, and if I was, say, like moving and he was trying to get a shot of me, he could very easily just use his hips and his legs to just move and like follow me. Do my, I'll do my model walk and you just follow me across, so. <laughs> and this is why you're not a model. Yeah. Tip number five is to learn to move right. Get the moves like Jagger. So this is maybe going against the grain. Okay. But because of the way I shoot, again, I'm, I'm supporting it here on the camera. Mm -hmm. I would, if I'm walking, I'd probably do a bit of a lower shot anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm focusing on you. If I'm focusing on your feet, I, I, the way I move is I cross my legs, so I cross over. So I'm, I'm preempting where I'm going. Mm -hmm. I'm getting that step. There's a bit more stable, so a triangle. Mm -hmm. the, the most supportive structure in the world. Yeah. Technical sh for you. <laughs> so, so if you notice though, what Dan's doing is when he walks, he's holding it away. Because if you hold it near to yourself while you're moving, you're going to get all that shake of your body. So that's the one time where we contradict tip four is that you want it to be kind of a little bit further away. But also with his feet, it's like the creeping step. Yeah, little steps. The like, so, like you don't want to be like walking like normal, do you? So little creeping steps, as if you are an animal of a predator and you're slowly creeping on your prey, but less creepy. Okay, so to wrap up, we're gonna see if my footage has improved from the first piece, which <laughs> wasn't great. So what modifications have you made to my camera? You've got wide lens, you've got stabilization, and you've also got the strap. Perfect. Uh, so I'll flip it. So using all the tips, I'm going to try and get a better piece of footage. Okay, so maybe if you're kind of lower, lower a bit, okay. not so low, but oh, not so low. Yeah. How's it looking? And use your arms and your hips to kind of focus on me. Yeah. How's that looking? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, she's crossing her legs. That's good. She's picked it up. Yeah. And are you giving it a good push on the... Yep. Yeah. I'm pushing. <laughs> and how's that look? How's it feel? I think it looks a lot better than before. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this episode of Tricks and Tips, uh, Hijacked. Um, like we said, Joey couldn't be here because he's f***ing around with his hair or something. So we've taken over. So if you leave a comment in be below saying how much better we have been, um, and maybe we'll get a rise. A, a ra raise? Raise. Raise. A raise. So make sure you give this video a thumbs up. It lets us know if you're enjoying the content and we can keep making it. And like Dan said, comment down below any suggestions or any questions you have and we might make a video out of it. And don't forget to subscribe. We will see you in the next one, hopefully. Peace. Peace. See ya.